I'm an atheist, humanist, philosopher, and prehistory researcher, writer, and I'm looking forward to delving in the uh, history of religion and archaeology and anthropology and prehistory or history in general on the History Voyager Show. to try to give thoughtful hypothesis for what could have possibly happened. And I want to say too something that people miss when they start liking or, or believing pseudo-archaeology, you know, or pseudo-history, or even pseudo-science, is often these type of ideas start with an idea and then try to go look to facts, you know, to match the idea. And now, let's get to the main portion of the show, which is upon Gobekli Tepe, the first temple or place of religious worship or a communal meeting place around 12,000 years old. This show will attempt to only give the highlights of my ideas on Gobekli Tepe. There will be 10 shows, thus other videos will go into more depth on the specific issues that I wish to address. Please check out all the videos. Like and subscribe. Gobekli Tepe, which kind of upends the past conventional view of the rise of civilization and the level of religious devotion at the time. Gobekli Tepe means hill with navel or potbelly hill. It probably has a reference to pregnancy, it's believed. The definition of Tepe is an artificial human created mound used in place names. So that's the last part of the name of Tepe, Gobekli Tepe. Around 13,000 years ago, or it's possibly more, the site functioned as a ritual or religious center, with early circles being added in stone around 11,600 years ago. Then, between 11,130 to 10,620 years ago, the first building stage for Layer 3 was completed. And when it means Layer 3, it's talking about, as an archaeologist, Layer 1 would be like towards the surface, and then the further it goes down, the further further numbers it gets instead of how some people would think of it. They do it as you're digging down. And at this point at layer three, it was totem, a totemistic, shamanistic, proto-pagan meeting place and a place of ancestor worship, cultic feasting, as well as drinking, with the evidence of beer brewing starting at almost 11,000 years ago. Next, around 10,280 to 9,970 years ago, enclosure B is constructed followed by enclosure C at around 9,560 and 9,370. Some of the pillars are amazing, up to 15 to 20 feet high and can weigh up to 20 tons, many with totem animals and anthropomorphic human-like fertility cult representation. Just think of the kind and amount of religious faith one would need to build such a site as this. Speaking of building, one of the most fascinating facts about this site is that they didn't have the wheel nor metal tools. All they had were stone tools and little else. I see this place as having several somewhat hidden themes, which include the concept of animal gods or sacred spirit animals, female gods or sacred spirit female ancestor worship, cl male clan leader cult, sky burials, as well as skull cult. The likelihood is that the main focus of the temple varied from one theme to another over the thousands of years in which it was used. I would also like to address what this place is not, as there are several conspiracy theories about Gobekli Tepe. It is not the Garden of Eden, nor anything like that. It is not or was not constructed by aliens nor some non-human knowledge. The Gobekli Tepe site is also not alone in the area at a similar time. In fact, there is an ancient site older than Gobekli Tepe with an early rudimentary precursor temple. The site is estimated at about 12,000 years old and is around 186 miles east of Gobekli Tepe. Several special structures, which we can call temples or special buildings, were unearthed at this settlement. In addition to many houses and dwellings, houses and dwellings make a different than Gobekli Tepe, which is more religious only to its temple complex. Right, there is 
a picture of the small and not very impressive temple that was made before Gobekli Tepe. To better understand Gobekli Tepe, it is good to see it in a context such as how it shares space with other special sites at the same general time in the same general region, which are explained as pre-pottery Neolithic sites. The pre-pottery Neolithic chronology is broken down into pre-pottery A, B, and C, but mainly it's A and B. Pre-pottery Neolithic A spans roughly from around 11,500 years ago to 10,000 years ago, and pre-pottery Neolithic B spans roughly around 9,600 to 8,000 years ago. Early Levantine Antonola Neolithic and Antonola also involves what is now the region of modern Turkey and it ranges to upper Mesopotamia region which involves what is now the region of modern day Iraq and this is all part of what is called the Fertile Crescent. In this context, it involves a the spanning of modern-day Iraq, southeastern Turkey, western Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, and Jordan. It focuses on this area's emergence of the separated skulls from which are plastered and painted, which is called the skull cult. And this custom of modeling plaster human-like images arose in the pre-pottery Neolithic, certainly by around 10,000 500 to 6,000 years BC, or around, in a, another way of saying it, 12,500 to 8,000 years ago. It used to be believed that the skull cult um, was much younger until stuff was found that gave evidence for it at Quebecli Tepe. Ritual behavior during the pre pottery Neolithic is quite remarkable, such as the emergence of monumental architecture large buildings constructed by the community for use in gathering spaces for the commu those communities and allied peoples built for religious gathering purposes. In short, Gobekli Tepe had a lot of company. It did not spring out of nowhere, like has been said to by some, especially saying that somehow it connects to some ancient, you know, more advanced culture. I don't see that in the archaeological record. Gobekli Tepe's lowest level, with the round stone structures and the largest T pillars, dates reliably to the pre-pottery Neolithic A period, when the activities of such would eventually evolve into agriculture and animal husbandry that were already underway at this time. The middle level with the smaller square structures dates to the early pre-pottery Neolithic B. The pre-pottery Neolithic B appearance of domesticated in corn wheat nearby is a fine indicator that pre-domestication civilization was indeed being practiced in this area by the time Gobekli Tepe was founded in combination with hunting and gathering of other wild edibles. Gobekli Tepe had the ritual use of food and alcohol present. The thought of Gobekli Tepe beer brewing at 11,000 years ago seems strange to some, but it connects to brewing of alcohol, which is thought to have developed around 11,500 years ago. It may have even in some ways driven the new cultivation of grains and agricultures in this general time. Even though we may see alcohol as mundane today, it is most likely it had a religious and ritualistic significance in the past. This prehistoric religious site, consisting of three circular stone temples and other structures so far uncovered, are but a small part of the total complex itself, as ground-penetrating radar seems to indicate. These known and uncovered structures, or ritually engraved giant standing stones, it is but a part of what may yet be found, but it is enough for us to realize its great significance. There are also anthropomorphic human-like totem features on two center standing stones in the shape pillars inside the circle of stones. Their arms and hands are depicted indicating the monolithic pillars may be referencing a stylized person, which I think actually has to do with the ancestors. The many tall T-shaped pillars and shaped stones are elaborately carved with things 
on them around these two main pillars. With things such as boars, different big cats, bulls, scorpions, vultures and snakes that seem to be twisting and crawling on the pillars. The T-shaped stones may connect to sky burials, already have been seen in the hunter-gatherer shamanism which predates the site. This may have been directly on the pillars, hanging on the pillars in some fashion, or laid between them like an offering if the site was open to the air, which I think is possible. Alternatively, if the site was roofed, the sky burials may have been nearby at Gobekli Tepe or at some other site where the bodies were brought to Gobekli Tepe. Not only are there a set of arms and hands on a few of the T pillars, especially the center ones, and mainly the center ones, I should say, which to me may represent the clan leader ancestors. But there is one pillar seeming to express what to me could be a totemistic story done on what sort of looks like a regular totem pole pillar from layer two. It's dated to around 10,800 years ago to 10,000 years ago, and it appears to involve a woman squatting, potentially giving birth. This could be related to a birth with what may be a child coming out with its head and arms showing, as well as snakes on either side pointing to the child. And I would like to make one quick point about snakes. There is a thought that the umbilical cord could represent the idea of a snake and childbirth. And of even more interest, one stone slab holds a crude carving of a naked woman squatting with her legs spread and genitals open, possibly also referencing childbirth. But it could be uh, somewhat of a sexual nature, and this expression or design seems to be somewhat new in the archaeological record. This is also similar to spread-legged uh, seemingly or possible goddess motifs later, which are part of the extensive religious art even at 9,500 to 7,700 year old site of Chattahoyk, the first religious created or designed city, which is also located in Turkey, but in central Turkey. Likewise, the other stone art on the T-shaped stones may be stylized with what to me are or could be animal spirit, with the seemingly most symbolic used animal being snake, which snakes make up 28% of all the engravings, possibly indicating it had more of a significance than the other animals, although bulls are also very prominent. An interesting point to note is that the sacred status of snakes goes back to the oldest places of worship in Africa before humans actually migrated out of Africa. In fact, a place called Tesordo, and I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, hills in southern uh, Africa has a natural stone snake which had been modified and had showed worship as far back as 70,000 to 75,000 years ago. Also, there is a common connection in many mythologies to snakes and goddesses, such as snake goddesses, snakes as part of a goddess in some way or another, or snakes as a familiar for such goddesses. Gobekli Tepe holds proof of complex societies involved in some kind of organized religion before settling into uh, concentrated sedimentary communities, though such emerging communities can be seen in a few sites of the time in the general region, such as 12,400 to 11,700 year old site of Korkut Tepe in Turkey with pre or early agricultural cultic ritualism. The Kork Tepe site held uh, mound structures, tombs, and grave goods, as well as ritual art. Ritualistic behavior is also found on the bones of 10 individuals who exist 
exhibit cut marks that seem to indicate deflushing along with an application of plaster and paint seen in the later skull cult as part of burial customs, which has been interpreted by some as the fact that they were uh, the corpse somehow being purified, like I said, or deflushed, maybe even cut for birds and as a uh, sky burial, possibly to help the, the deceased pass in some way to the afterlife. They found a carved stone human head, possibly male, seeming to be part of a larger stone sculpture. Also of interest, it is a part of a carved stone sculpture of a large bird holding a human head. This theme is also matched with depictions of wall art at Chattel Hoyk. This wall art at the first religious city contains murals with large birds and headless human bodies, which have a, a at least on one of the T pillars has a uh, match at Gobekli Tepe. One of the T pillars of Gobekli Tepe shows two snakes with uh, a round object between them, as well as a bird holding a round object and a bird near a headless body with an erection. Finally, around 9,370 years ago, the entire religious complex was deliberately buried and was filled in with debris consisting of mainly small stone fragments, stone vessels, and stone tools. But it also had bones of both animals and humans and a few figurines. This concludes this episode. I thank you for taking time to watch it, and I hope it was interesting as well as informative. I always hope to inspire others to learn and think, so I hope you learn something. Now on with the show, or a little on my show. Make sure to watch any episodes you may have missed or not gotten to yet. Likewise, I am ever working night and day to get them out. Just remember, the History Voyager show will cover the evolution of religion, prehistory, history, archaeology, anthropology. There is an out. Here is the outline for the series on Gobekli Tepe. There are going to be 10 shows before moving on other series or shows on different things. Stay tuned. Number one, the History Voyage, Gobekli Tepe, show one, the first temple, which will explain and show Gobekli Tepe, the first exposure or basics. Number two, the History Voyagers, Gobekli Tepe show, number two, the pillars, which will explain and show all the Gobekli Tepe pillars, or most of them, close up, and we'll explain them in more detail. Number three, the History Voyagers Gobekli Tepe show three, T-pillar site similarity, which will explain the Gobekli Tepe T-pillar and all other sites that share these similarities. Number four, the History Voyagers Gobekli Tepe show. Number four, Sky Burial, which will explain sky burials at the Gobekli Tepe site and other sites. Number five, the History History Voyagers Gobekli Tepe show number five, Skull Cult, which will explain the Gobekli Tepe Skull Cult that seems to start there and spread over after that all over for a few thousand years. Number six, the History Voyagers Gobekli Tepe show six, Obsidian Importance, which will explain obsidian use and why Gobekli Tepe may be in the area it is, such as a stone tool mine that has been used for around 14,000 years ago. So, before the site of Gobekli Tepe became what it is, which started after around 12,000 years ago. Number 7. The History Voyagers Gobekli Tepe Show 7. Agricultural Revolution, which will explain Gobekli Tepe's site in relation with the agricultural revolution, which seems to spread an agricultural, also associated religion that I speculate had early paganism themes connected, or what later would be part of the themes of paganism. Number eight, the History Voyagers Gobekli Tepe show number eight, early paganism theme, which will explain my speculations about Gobekli Tepe's early paganism theme and their similarities to other sites. Number nine, the History Voyagers Gobekli Tepe show number nine, monumental cover-up, which will explain who possibly the people were that made the Gobekli Tepe site and then why it was abandoned and buried. Number 10. The History Voyagers Gobekli Tepe show number 10. Megalith Cultures which will explain Gobekli Tepe and other megalith cultures. And I hit the subscribe button. Gotta hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and a little notification bell. Thank you. Take care.